Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again back to Hashtag Sports. <laughs> Hashtag Sports. Maybe if I can get that off to the right start. Uh, joining me for our rapid fire segment <laughs> is someone you all know is Joe Sharp from Believers Talk. Uh, down in the description yeah. is Joe's uh, YouTube channel, and make sure you give him a sub at the conclusion of the episode, as well as his Twitter. Make sure you give him a follow. Uh, mm-hmm. Just so, so you guys know, Joe covers all things Buffalo. So Bill, Sabres, UB, he's a great follow, as well as calling play-by-plays for Hashtag Sports of, of the Buffalo Bills games during the season on Sportscaster, which is also in the description. So we'd like to welcome and uh, thank for devoting his time to Hashtag Sports for the Rapid Fire segment. Joe, how are you doing today, bud? Good, man. Always happy to join you guys. We always have a good time. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you for having me on. I look forward to uh, doing this uh, Rapid Fire with you. Yeah, Rapid, it, it's so funny because Paul and I always talk about it all the time. We do a Rapid Fire segment, Hashtag Nation, that, just to give you guys a brief description. is They ask us a bunch of questions, and then we have to answer bills related or not. And some of the questions in there are actually pretty hilarious. I think one <laughs> of them was, and I, I'm sorry I can't remember who, who put it in there, but they're like, why do we need a deep deep field threat when we have Pat DeMarco? Like, uh, <laughs> So it's actually pretty humorous. But the, the way that the Rapid Fires go is there's sometimes some of our longest segments. But mm-hmm. <laughs> that being said, said uh you know hashtag nation comes in with some great questions so uh i you i i gave you some questions beforehand but the little twist that we're giving to hashtag nation now for the rapid fire segment is this guys whatever joe comes up with for his answer to your question i have to try to propose a counter to it Mm -hmm. so some questions will have them some questions won't but it's if i make some enemies tonight for today i do apologize but that's what we're going to try to do for t- for today so uh without any further ado uh let's go right into it uh first yeah. question out of the gates tom galati he said do you think there will be a football season i do not i don't see any sports being played uh well until uh until well into 2021 joe what is your take on uh the epidemic that's happening around the nation and the world yeah. and how that's going to affect the sports season coming up Well, I'm glad to see that you can say epidemic better than uh, Floyd Mayweather. That's a plus. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I feel like no one knows, right? Like this, this pandemic, it's something that's unprecedented. So what that means to me is there's going to be unprecedented results, right? I mean, we just heard in the news on Thursday in Pittsburgh, they have a trial drug that hopefully can be used as a vaccine. So hopefully they'll be able to start human trials. And now according to the article, it takes about 12 to 15 months once human trials start for a drug or vaccine to get on the market. Well, that's probably like normal time but are we going to expedite that knowing that this is not just a small thing here this is a pandemic this is much bigger so uh i i just feel like it's a complete unknown if i were to guess right now right now the nfl um jeff pash the nfl uh, executive vice president said that they plan on doing things quite normal so why wouldn't i think the same thing it's really tough to try to put a a counterpoint to this because of the the, yeah. the unknowns that are that are happening right. around it but if you know, and it was funny. Well, the this, this situation is not funny, but everyone's talking about. Well, Brady's finally out of division, and now there's not going to be a 2020 season right. <laughs> for the right. Buffalo Bills. Uh, yeah, I would, I would hope that things end up um, coming back to normal, and then there'll, there'll be sports and athletics just for, yeah. just for the simple entertainment value of, of right. a lot of people. I think that it, it's going to be huge. Paul and I had talked about it a little bit on a previous episode of why. You, th- you thought the Buffalo Bills specifically were able, to, they were resigning a lot of guys that they knew from Carolina. So, yeah. uh, because you can't really get medicals, you can't really work out or interview right. a guy. Uh, I don't, I don't know how yeah. zoom accounts are going with a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people are purchasing zoom accounts, but right. it's going to be, it's going to be really tough. It's going to be really close. Um, I, I hope that there's a shortened season. Um, I mean, I want, mm-hmm. I'm hoping for a full season, but if it's a shortened season, I'll even take that. So. Yeah. Now, one one thing that's interesting to me about this question is, do we trade a first round draft pick for a year older Stefan Diggs? And how does the contract situation work out? Does the contract work against them if the season doesn't happen or are they still, you know, what I mean, like, how does that all work? That's because something. I don't think I don't think we would trade a first round draft pick for a guy if we only had him for three years instead of four. I think that's that's a very interesting piece. I don't know if they would have done that because one of the one of the uh, bonuses of having Stefan Diggs is that you do have him for four right. years and it's the, right. it's similar to a rookie deal. Right. Uh, and then by the time he's done with his deal, he's going to be 30 years old, which is a, yeah. a, an incredible bonus for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, 
it's interesting to see how guys will, will play with that and how, how mm-hmm. they're going to, you know, you got the Miami Dolphins with three first round picks. You got the, you know, Las Vegas Raiders. It's even weird to say that name, but um, <laughs> it's interesting to see how the draft will play out and how it's going to be in, in a virtual world. I'm very interested mm-hmm. to see how that plays out. So, mm-hmm. all right. Number two off of the press is Daniel Gauries, who is a thorn in Paul's <laughs> side majority of the time, but it's awesome. I love, I love Daniel's yeah, feedback oh, on, on the streams. Okay, he says, did the Bills draft a wide receiver in such a deep wide receiver class? Uh, well, I, you know, if, if you're asking me simple yes, no, I'll give you the rep for answer would be yes, they will. Uh, I recently did on my channel, I did a roster breakdown comparing the 90 man 2019 roster to the 90 man 2020 roster currently, which is currently set at 69 uh, men. And in this, so far this year, we have nine wide receivers on the depth chart. Last year, we had 13 when we hit 90. So, there's plenty of room for wide receivers. We're talking about 40 wide receivers, more than 40 wide receivers being projected to go in this draft. So I think the Buffalo Bills will look at, at some point in the draft, uh, look at wide receivers and, and especially at the undrafted free agents. We saw what happened with uh, David Stills last year. I wouldn't be surprised if the Buffalo Bills go that route as well. God. I, it's, I, these questions are so hard to come up with a counter to because I just think, <laughs> I just think that. Well, before I get to my counterpoint, I just think yeah. by having Beasley for two more years, John Brown, which just turned thirty, uh, mm-hmm. you got him for two more seasons. Uh, you have Stephon Diggs for four. I think it's the perfect time to bring a, a, a young guy in right. to learn the nuances of this offense. Uh, you, you just signed Isaiah McKenzie for one more year. You have Duke Williams. Uh, I think he's going to be an exclusive rights free agent next year. I'm not. I'm not so sure. I have to check on that. But what I could say is that they've, if I can offer a counter, is that they've bolstered a lot of the question marks uh, involving this offense now that because mm-hmm. you do have Isaiah McKenzie, you do have Duke Williams, you do have, um, uh, you know, Ray Ray McLeod is back. And he's, right. he's a guy that doubles up as, as your wide out, uh, as your, um, I'm sorry, as your returner as well. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. if you have all of those pieces in place uh, with the Buffalo Bills running 70% 11 personnel, which is one tight end, one running back, and then you also have three wide receivers in the set, you figure mm-hmm. if you had more wide receivers, they would you'd have to have more of them on your roster. I don't know. I think they may go with the undrafted free agent, like you said, with Sills. I, if they yeah. if they think that uh, certain players in the draft are guys at key positions that they need more than wide receiver, then I think they'll forego that and try to get them in free agency or undrafted free agents. I'm sure yeah. Bean and McDermott have their eyes on guys that that probably won't be drafted and they can right. come in and and be contributors to the offense, just like uh, you know a 2018 Robert Foster was. So sure. we'll, we'll have to see if that pans out. Yeah, there, there are definitely, I mean, there are going to be some undrafted free agent wide receivers that in other years would have gone the fourth, fifth round. So, I mean, it's just a deep wide receiver class, and that's just the way it is. And you can find value at wide receiver, especially in this draft class at the undrafted free agent or undrafted, uh, yeah, undrafted free agent. Market. Just get some of those guys from the SEC. I mean, they all know how to, <laughs> That's all you got to do. That's the only guys you need. <laughs> okay, so coming up, we got uh, Jordan Stivikowski. He mm-hmm. said, with Diggs, Brown, Beasley, and assuming Allen's accuracy gets better, is it possible for the Bills to be the next greatest show on turf? Uh, and is this the best wide receiver group we've ever had? So a two-part question. So, uh, Super. yeah, so take it away with the first part, and uh, you can go to the second if you want, or if you want to just pause in between we, it. So Yeah, we'll pause in between. We'll split it up. Okay. So, uh, and, and I can't wait to hear your counterpoint for this. So in order to, to – <laughs> In order to say that the Buffalo Bills will be the greatest show on turf, you're telling me that Brian Dables as good of an offensive coordinator as Mike Martz. And I just don't see that as a true statement. Plus, uh, so my answer is no, I don't, because not only do I make the Mike, Mike Mike Martz to Brian Dable comparison, you just have to think about where we play, right? St. Louis played in the Dome, and when they weren't playing in Dome, they were playing out West. We play in the Northeast. Come November, come December, we're going to need Devin Singletary and maybe TJ Yeldon and whoever else carrying the load. You know, I think that we match up well if you look at like Tory Holt compared to Brown or um, Isaac Bruce compared to Diggs, you know, and, and you go down the line, it, it compares well, but then you look at Marshall Falk compared to Devin Singletary, I don't know if that compares as well. Uh, but no, I just don't see us being the greatest show on turf. Oh my God, to Marshall Falk! I, I hold in the highest regards as yeah. one of the best running backs of all time because he he changed the position and how it was looked at. Right. You know, I mean, he was so he was so dynamic a player. And your comparison to of, of Mike Martz to Brian Dable, <laughs> um, 
That's that's fine. So I have to stand on the side of they will be the greatest show. Yes, yes. Well, it's it's been you know people like to talk about the off season, like to speculate certain things. So the Buffalo Bills have been already touted as having the best wide receiver. You know, the three wide receivers yeah. in the AFC East that could yeah. that could manifest. I just don't see them comparing to a team such as Kansas City as far mm-hmm. as their wide receivers that they have. We just we just had recent reports that uh, Sammy Watkins took a pay cut, but he has incentives yeah. in his contract that can escalate to $16 million. He was getting paid 21, let's just put it that way. He was the highest paid player on the Chiefs. That's that right. just, to me, was just insane. <laughs> but for the reasons that you stated, um, you know, this is going to be the third season going into this offense. You, you look at the, the way that the – the offenses are run now in the NFL. Devin Singletary, we st- they, you got TJ Yeldon behind Devin Singletary, so yeah. the, it could force the Buffalo Bills to throw more in 2020. And mm-hmm. with Allen being able to hit every spot in a 53 by 100 yard field, um, <laughs> I, I think it has the possibility to explode and be be very uh, um, be very uh, productive in in 2020. Yeah. But I mean, and then we, t- we you talk about you talk about coming out uh, the first game last year the Jets. I mean, the Bills mm-hmm. start with like 17, 18 passes to start the game. You're Imagine right, if yeah. they have digs in that, yeah. and you use kind of Singletary as, you know, you know, I, it seems like Dable's leaning toward passing the ball a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though the routes may not uh, may not be very deep routes. You have guys that can catch the ball underneath and make plays for you. So, right. uh, I guess that's my that's my argument for them yeah. actually being the greatest show on turf. And I think every Bills fan will be very excited if they come out and become the greatest show on turf. But <laughs> another thing I have to remember is that the the Rams were the greatest show on turf for three years, and that's why they got the nickname. So not only do we have to do it this year, we have to have some sort of longevity with that as well. So, which I, again, I'm all, all for it. <laughs> And the second part of the question from Jordan, he said, he said, is this the mm-hmm. best wide receiver group that uh, we've ever had? I think it's, uh, you, you think about a lot of guys, you think about yeah. a lot of, team, a lot of successful Bills teams back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you want to compare this one to it but just for the, the, the question or for the point that I just made earlier, you're talking about guys that, um, it's such a pass happy league now. Everyone I'm right. talks about how much of a pass happy league is. So statistically, it may be better, mm-hmm. but I'm just I'm curious about your take and where I have to stand on this one. <laughs> I, no, I completely agree with you. Statistically, just because of how the league is run now compared to how it was run back in the '90s, it might look better. But you're talking about a '92 Buffalo Bills team who had two Hall of Famers on it. When you talk about Lofton and Reed, so that's where I go. I mean, I don't see. John Brown being a Hall of Famer. I mean, maybe Cole Beasley can surprise me and become a Hall of Famer. Stephon Diggs still has plenty of years left to play, so we're not going to judge that. Um, but even, you know, I thought you might cover 92, so I wanted to think of another year. And if you look at the 99 Buffalo Bills, I mean, if we would have had these three guys all in their prime at the same time, I think it would have been a lights out wide receiver for the, two, the 99 Buffalo Bills wide receiving trio was Andre Reed, Eric Mould, Eric Moulds, and Peerless Price. Could you have imagined having all three of those guys in their prime? Obviously, Andre Reid at the end of his career, those two guys just coming up. Uh, but, man, that's a pretty good wide receiver trio there, too. Oh, my God. What was the year with Bledsoe, too, where I think it was Peerless Price and Moles both had uh, – did they both have 100 yeah. catches? In 2002, and I just did a video on this, so this is why I know these numbers. I'm not like an encyclopedia. Uh, in 2002, uh, Eric Moult had 100 catches, Peerless Price had 94. But then you had uh, Josh Reed was their next wide receiver with like 34 or something like that. So, I mean, yeah. you got to break that down. Drew wasn't about spreading the ball around. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably why he exited New England because that's all that offense does is spread it around. Right. right. Uh, okay, so I have to say – so you say no – um, yeah, I have to say no. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because a lot of people are are very heavy on statistics, this could be an offense that, yeah. that makes or breaks. Because if you talk about the likes of who you have to play and who you have to beat inside the AFC, there are so many uh, dynamic offenses that you have. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll harken back to Kansas City once again with Andy Reid calling the shots there. You know, Eric mm-hmm. Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator as well. Uh, they're always going to be dynamic. They're always going to be explosive. Um, and, and I, I kind of hold them to, you know, the offensive standard, especially with Patrick Mahomes there. But if you're talking about the, this trio and how many times the Buffalo Bills run three wide receiver sets and how often they're going to be on the field. You know, we look back to that 92 team. Yeah. Yes, they were Hall of Famers. And a mm-hmm. lot of that was attributed to the four, the four year run when they went to four straight mm-hmm. Super Bowls. If, if they don't go to those four straight Super Bowls, I think it's going to be kind of a harder 
argument. Yeah. I know we're talking about ifs now, but it, right, if right, we right. have to bring it up to this time, I think they're going to have more opportunity. This offense is going to be more explosive. They're going to run sets that all three of them are going to be available as well. So mm-hmm. it, it could be, from a production standpoint, one of the best seasons that the Buffalo Bills have as far as their wide receiving core and generating yards and touchdowns. But you also have to, you know, to your point, you, all, you also have to account for Allen's legs and Devin Singletary, both two guys right. that, can, that can make a play with their legs and, mm-hmm. and get out in space and do a lot of different things for you. So, uh, oh, man. If they were the best, you know, like like the first part of this question, if they were the best yeah. wide receiver, if they were the best, uh, obviously no, no no Buffalo fan would argue it, but it's no. it's it's definitely gonna be a tall task, and it's all yeah. run by number seventeen, so we'll see how he he does this year as well. I feel, I feel like I'm making more enemies right now than you are, though, Mario. I'm no, I. <laughs> it's it's it's, tough, yeah, it's great show on turf, right? <laughs> yes, it is. You know, uh, Joe, what's wrong with you, man? What's going yeah. on? It's super fandom time, you know. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, to, to try to pause having more enemies here, uh, Jeff yeah. Farner comes in. Uh, primetime games and a schedule. What's your thoughts on that, the primetime games and the schedule? I think the Buffalo Bills are, are, you know, after last season, the Pittsburgh Steelers game being the most watched Sunday Night Football game in a long time, the Dallas Cowboys game on uh, Thanksgiving being the highest rated Thanksgiving game in a long time. I think the Bills, the NFL would be dumb not to put the Buffalo Bills in some primetime games. Now, I hear some people saying like the over under is three and a half, which and let, I, I've i heard rumors that the Buffalo Bills will play Miami in London and that will be Miami's home game, hopefully. Um, so if you count that as a primetime game, I have us down for three at that point. I think that the Buffalo Bills will play their home game against New England on primetime because one thing everyone wants to see, unless you're a New England fan, is New England's downfall, right? Now that they don't have Tom Brady, you want to see New England lose. Well, who's the next next team up in that division? Supposedly, according to you know all these analysts, it's the Buffalo Bills. So if there's going to be a downfall for the New England Patriots this year, it's more than likely going to be the Bills. They're going to put that Bills game at, in Buffalo uh, on prime time. And then I pick one away game, and I look at the away schedule, and I'm thinking maybe the San Fran game playing against the Super Bowl champ. And the only reason I say that is because – Back in the 90s, Chris Berman would always say that San Fran versus Buffalo would be the Super Bowl. And I think San Fran and Buffalo still hold a record for the only game without a single punt. You know, at least I know they played a game without a single punt. So. Wow. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot to dissect there as far as yeah. the schedule goes. But I think, I mean, the NFL has always been, I don't know if this is an opposite point, type of thing mm-hmm. with the, with the Buffalo Bills with the primetime games. I would always I would love to see primetime games uh, a little bit more, but you have to realize yeah. something that it, that was really huge in the two games that you mentioned, the Pittsburgh game and the Dallas game. Those are both away games. Um, right. So the NFL will be very conscious of that and seeing like listen, okay, these guys, this team is very um, this team is very dynamic and this mm-hmm. team this team does draw viewership in in the likes that can make us money. However, mm-hmm. they drew that viewership in being away teams i think it'd be really tough i and and mm. one of the i'm not 100 percent certain on this but i think patrick mahomes usurped tom brady as far as uh his jersey sales so i think the okay. nfl may take that into account as well if brady's mm-hmm. not new england i don't know if the new england buffalo game even though everyone wants to see that the crumbling of the evil empire except mm-hmm. for new england fans <laughs> uh I don't know if Brady not being in uniform is going to be a draw anymore uh, right. in in New England. So uh, from that aspect alone, I don't know. I, I would suspect that the Buffalo Bills get three primetime games, but I think you could bank on the fact that two of those will at least be away. Right. And, and then they'll kind of test the waters by giving them a home primetime game and seeing how the viewership is because a lot of people might even go to the game. They might be out in the parking lot sure. the whole time watching the game. You know, sure. you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um so for that reason alone, how those games were away games, it might factor into okay, yeah, so let's give Buffalo some primetime games. Oh yeah, let, let's have them go to uh, let's have them go to the LA Chargers. You know, let's right. have them go to London. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It would be crazy for that to happen, but um, I'm all for the Bills being on primetime, man. It's fun. Now, the question for you, and it's feeding off this question: If the Bills get a primetime game in Buffalo, do you think the NFL will be smart enough to make sure it's a September, early October game and not flirt with the idea of putting December at home in this in December on primetime? Well, you know, people like seeing stuff that they haven't seen before. If you put a December home game for Buffalo on primetime, you mm-hmm. may get something like the Colts game we had right. uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, that was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, it was chaotic and messy, but it was yeah. a lot of fun to watch. Uh, 
I, I think they're going to be smart with it. I don't think – if you have a December game and you want to make it a primetime game with Buffalo, it's because mm-hmm. they're going to go play in a dome somewhere. Sure. And, and yeah. you know, I haven't I haven't checked the schedule. I'm trying to run through my head and what teams have domes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's – I mean, you're playing AFC West, NFC West. So if you're, if you're playing a December game, you're probably playing at Seattle. Right. You know what I mean? That game would be – absolutely ridiculous Mm -hmm. um yeah i I know they assign what the home and away games are i think they have assigned the home and away games they do yeah i must have made i I must be wrong in that but i i I can't remember what they are offhand so yeah no um yeah i'm thinking about the seattle game the only reason why that would be fun and some of you might remember this some of you won't i actually almost got kicked out of bar the last time the bills played (laughs) seattle because it was it was a monday night football game and richard sherman came and hit our kicker after the whistle because he jumped yep. off sides and there was no penalty flag yep. and yeah so uh so i would definitely be interested in that game uh obviously richard sherman's not there anymore but we'll play richard sherman when we play san fran so. absolutely yeah that'd be fun. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of bad blood coming up this season i have a feeling yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right uh you know uh we're getting close to the end here so we go mm-hmm. with uh john patrick comes in he said which buffalo bill is most likely to get traded i don't know if you're going to make enemies or we're both going to make enemies <laughs> here, so um so which buffalo bill is most likely to get traded and uh uh for this upcoming season so so I look at the roster and guys remember one thing when I'm talking because this is where we're going to make enemies in order to trade a player other teams have to be interested in said player I would love to get rid of Lee Smith but I just don't see another team saying yes give me three penalties a game thank you I'll take that and I'll give you a sixth round draft pick like there's no there's no one who wants that so uh, I actually picked one defensive and one offensive player so you can tell me if you agree or disagree with this and for my defensive player I don't think it's going to be much of a surprise to many people I've been saying we need to cut this guy or get rid of this guy one way or another for most of this off season. And that's Trent Murphy. Oh. Trent Murphy only has one year left on his contract. And that's, if you think about Brandon Bean, he loves trading those one year contract guys, right. Yep. And get, getting something for him. So one year left on his contract to do to make almost $10 million, only 1.75 of that's guaranteed money. I mean, if you trade them, obviously it doesn't matter because the other team's paying for them anyway. But if you get that off the books and give yourself $10 million and more cap space, you can help re-sign someone like a Tredavious White or someone else, Milano, whoever you want to talk about, Dawkins. Uh, so that would be my defensive uh, player who I think we would trade. And my offensive player, again, going with the guy who only has one year left on his contract and looking at the wide receivers, I would definitely see it coming from that position group. And I just picked Andre Roberts. Um, we just re-signed. Isaiah McKenzie, uh, who could do special teams. You mentioned earlier in this video, Ray McLeod's on the team. He can run special teams. Who knows who we're getting in the NFL draft uh, if we do get a wide receiver on special that could do special teams. Andre Roberts, I like Andre Roberts. Again, he was the only guy uh, in special teams who had top 10 kicking and uh, punt return yards. Uh, this season, this past season. So, and he was a pro bowler. So I like him, but that just increases his value even. So if you think about getting a fourth or a third for an Andre Roberts, you got to consider that. Ooh, I think just because of the longevity of Andre Roberts on said team that he gets traded to, mm-hmm. and you're going to have to renegotiate his contract. You're going to have to see right. how, how all that goes. I don't know if that is a third or fourth round pick that gets traded for that. Uh, sure. Just from, just from my standpoint, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I love me some Trent Murphy. So, but I don't, I don't know if the, and Breen is, Bean has been very smart with that. Yeah. The, the ability to trade a guy um, where the Buffalo Bills, I mean, at, you know, at at 2 million a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you're going to keep a Trent Murphy, but at at 9 million, I don't think he puts up $9 million stats for you. Um, With the depth that the Bills are projected to add in the 2020 NFL draft, it seems like he would be expendable, but you don't, you don't lose anything right now by cutting him now, or if you cut him, you know, June 1st. Uh, I I like Trent Murphy as the player, but as the, at the price tag that he's at, I don't think it's going to be favorable to the Bills. And as you said, uh, loosening up some of that cap, to roll over to get Trey White, to get Dawkins, to get Milano, any of those guys that you want to resign that have been in your program, mm-hmm. I think would be very, very interesting. Uh, the one guy, and I haven't looked at his financials, it, it probably doesn't work for his financials, but one guy that came to mind, there's only two guys left. There's only mm-hmm. two guys left from the previous regime. Right. And one of those guys is Reed Ferguson. If you haven't followed him yeah. yet on Twitter, SnapFlow69, greatest Twitter name yeah. ever. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the other guy is, is Jerry Hughes. And yep. we, that was one of Bean's first extensions was he extended Jerry Hughes. Mm-hmm. And 
he's the only guy I believe that's that's left besides Reed Ferguson that's from the previous regime. And if yeah. if he's on one year left, uh, I don't know how his contract works. If if the Bills are going to eat a ton of dead money or whatever, anything like that, someone can fact check me on that. But uh, he could be a guy as a, as an outside edge rusher. Now that you have Mario Addison, now that you have some more depth there, I I look at him as the other side. I know it sounds crazy, and I made a ton mm-hmm. of enemies. Half of you guys probably unsubbed to me right now, but what I'm just trying to say <laughs> is that if you're looking at one-year deals that are left on contracts and getting ahead of the curve and getting ahead of need, yeah. if they pick up an edge rusher, let's say in the third round, that's just a, a stud that fell down to them. Mm-hmm. Why not? Why not try to see if if Jerry Hughes is worth, you know, something out there on the market to trade and or um, what's going to happen there? I I don't foresee that, but if I had to pick a name, that's the name that I would yeah. pick. As far as the offensive side of the ball. I'll, it's it's tough to try to pick what guys would get traded because uh, the team has been completely turned over in being a McDermott's right. image. So all the guys right. that are on there, except for those two, are guys that they have either drafted, signed as free agents, or are, are acquired. So mm-hmm. I don't know if they're going to be with rosters at 90. I know it's, it's tough. Everyone wants certain things to happen immediately. But I, I think mm-hmm. if you just play the waiting game up until June and if, if the Bills – if a season ends up happening to happen, you may see some of them cuts come out uh, in in June. But yeah. if, there, if you can't practice, you can't play. What are you going to do? What, what's going to happen to these rosters? Just hearkening back to your previous point. I mean, it's so mm-hmm. interesting to try to think about what's going to happen with the season, with contracts, the timeline. Are they going to push things yeah. back? You know, who knows what happens. So, all right. So we got uh, we got one more question for you that I didn't right. give you. Nope, it's a surprise uh, one. And this one, we're not going to stand on opposite sides. We're actually going to gain some friends, I believe, on this yes. one. Uh, Aaron Clark, uh, Aaron Clark, he drops in. He says, who's your favorite current Bills player and of all time? Okay. All right. Well, that, the all-time one for me is is no question easy, and that's Frank Reich. I actually have a signed picture behind me of Frank Reich. <laughs> that's um, a sleeper, though. I don't think a lot of people That's a sleeper. Have and so, so – for those of you who don't know, I live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania now, originally from New York, and he's actually from close to this region. So oh, okay. uh, so there's some ties there. Actually, my first uh, – do you mind if I go into the story why Frank Reich's my favorite player? Let's go. Let's rock and roll. All right. So uh, my first ever Buffalo Bills game, 1993, it was a preseason game. I was still living in New York at the time. Whole family went. It was a great experience. Um, don't remember who won the game, but back then – if you recall, you could go back to slip back in the back of the stadium as the players were coming out and you can get autographs. Right. So uh, I was back there getting autographs and uh, my dad was trying to get an autograph of a player. I will not mention for me uh, just because I don't want to give him bad publicity on on, uh, on our <laughs> channel here. And we tried really hard to get uh, his signature. And when we got there, he he snubbed me my uh, of a signature. I had I was, you know, six years old, my autograph book in my hand, put it down, and he was like, and he literally said, get lost, kid, and got into his car and took off because he was at his car. Oh, my God. Um, Frank Reich saw this, and he actually picked me up off of my dad's shoulders, and he he found, like, one of those mini footballs that you get, like, the cheerleaders in high school games are throwing at oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he starts throwing with me, and he just starts hanging out with me, and he brings other Bills players over to sign stuff for me. And so <laughs> from that moment on, as a six-year-old kid, Frank Reich's the best person in my world so i've <laughs> always huge. had a soft spot for for frank Reich. that is that um, is pretty phenomenal I, yeah I, I it was, see it was a great now, story yeah. and uh you know I, I always wish that i would like see him someday and since he's from close to here and just be able to just thank him for that because i never forgot that moment oh i'm and sure I, he'd remember that moment I'm yeah sure. he like, seems like the type of guy great. who would remember that oh that's yeah. pretty awesome uh, and if, if you know anything about Frank Reich, you know that he's a great guy, like a character. You know, everyone speaks so highly of him. So, oh, yeah. Even though he was with the Eagles. But, hey, we're happy you got a Super Bowl ring, so good job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All these guys leave and get rings. It's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I was actually, I mean, thinking of old old Buffalo Bills when Don Beebe went to Green Bay and got his ring. Like, I was excited for him. But, yeah. That guy. <laughs> So my favorite current Buffalo, basically I want to tell a story so I can think longer about who my favorite Buffalo Bill is currently. Um, everyone knows I was a huge Pal Williams fan. Uh, unfortunately, he's now gone. Uh, it has to be between Tredavious White and Josh Allen. Me, personally, I'd probably go with Josh Allen just because of the passion you see out of him uh, on the field. I mean, I look at that, that leap over uh, Anthony Barr against Minnesota two years ago. That, that 
that play against in Thanksgiving game against Dallas where he just reaches down and gets that ball and just throws the defense off of him and and you know when he when he jumps up and thrusts his arm to throw like you think he's gonna throw a shoulder out just by thrusting the arm saying signaling first down and you're just like no calm down I'm happy uh but like that kind of enthusiasm uh but but you know and like I said I always go back and forth between him and Trey White because you know you see Trey White in the Baltimore game picking up the the play sheets and looking at him and just having a good time you know he's, he's always having a good time even on the field and that's something I like about him but I think for the passion I'd have to go with Josh Allen. oh man those are those are two those are two those are two great ones right there. Yeah. I like both of those. Uh, both quarterbacks, interestingly enough. Right. Yeah, yeah. both quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, I think uh, I'll go with all time first. I think a lot of people might be surprised. That Paul might be very surprised at this because he knew how big of a Bledsoe fan I was. Yeah, I was expecting uh, that. No, I, so I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Fred Jackson. I think okay. uh, I you know if you saw any of our broadcasts, his jersey was hanging uh, behind us. Mm-hmm. during the broadcast and we had uh, you know Buffalo Bills fan parking only as well on that but uh, Fred Jackson just the heart and determination a guy who uh, I mean very cl- very close to me he played division three I mean I played division mm-hmm. three um, so it was it was good to see a guy like that who just who non-stop grinder worked his tail off was was so underrated when it came to the passing game both receiving and picking up blitz picking up blitzes because he was so he was so technically sound in so many things that he did and um, I know a lot of people will probably get mad about this, but if you put Fred Jackson on this team, I don't know if he makes it. Right. But, um, and I, I probably lost some more subs for that. But, but the point is this: he he was Paul's on, gonna be so mad at you. There's I know there's a reason why you know he was on like the all drought team. I mean the, yeah. he was he was there throughout a lot of the drought. So if those te- I mean we talked about it on, on a previous episode, Paul and I. We said going into last year, some of the players that were good enough on a six and ten team might not make a team, which mm-hmm. ended up finishing ten and six. And mm-hmm. we saw that we saw some players, you know, LaShawn McCoy, you know, uh, Robert Foster was lost. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that happened. So I I don't know if Fred would would make this team, but as far as an all time Bill in the heart that he played with and just an all around good guy. Uh, yeah. I, I, w- I would pick Fred Jackson as my all-time favorite Bill. My current current favorite Bill might shock a lot of the hashtag nation because it's not Star Latulale, which many <laughs> of you might might think. Um, it's actually uh, John Feliciano. Uh, I just cool. and and I didn't I didn't pick Josh Allen too, so that's another surprise. Yeah. Uh, I I just I just like how gritty he is, you yeah. know. And it's the guy's Twitter handle is Mongo Feliciano. For our, <laughs> if you guys are friend, uh, fans of Blazing Saddles, you'll know who Mongo is. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's just just to, just the, how the guy came in. Um, you know, he was familiar with OG Bobby Johnson's system. He came in, he was able to play guard. He was able to play center when Morris went down. He's just so versatile. He's so mean. He he, he seems like the straw that stirs the drink on that offensive line. Mm-hmm. You know, he pulls, mm-hmm. he knocks people down. He, I just I just love everything about the guy's game. And uh, I know it's not very customary to like uh, an offensive lineman or defensive lineman, but those are those are the guys I gravitate toward because they're doing all the work, you know, doing a majority yeah. of the work so the other guys can, can thrive and, and have success. So... I'd have to pick uh, Mongo Feliciano as my favorite current Buffalo Bill right now. If I could get a jersey of his, I would, but I don't want to jinx it because he might get yeah, traded right. or something. <laughs> but, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in to our uh, rapid fire segment here on Hashtag Sports. You guys ask the questions, we answer them. Be sure to go down in the description and give Joe a follow on his YouTube channel, Believers Talk. He's got videos that release. Uh, if you hear anything Bills related that comes out, Joe's going to have a video on it. He talks about everything. Everything Buffalo Bills sports related as far as the Bills, Sabres, and, and University of Buffalo. This upcoming season, we're going to try to uh, get Joe on the books once again to uh, call us, call the play-by-play for the Buffalo Bills, which is uh, over on Sportscaster. It's awesome because you don't get to listen. You don't have to listen to uh, you know Chris Collinsworth or anybody else, right. Spiro Dides or any you, of those You don't guys. like Chris Collinsworth? Come on. Well, here's I a guy. I don't like him either. Don't worry about it. Here's He's a guy. the type of guy who... <laughs> Somebody said somebody put a meme out that said, "You think your life is bad? Imagine being Chris Collingsworth worth his wife it, it, during the <laughs> during the quarantine." Like, now here's a girl that, that that's, you know, I don't even know. I don't want to make any more enemies. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're gonna do rapid fire all this week. Uh, thank you for joining me. Make sure you give Joe a sub, and we'll check you guys out next time.